On the tee, the knackered golfist. Welcome to the Knackered Golfist. I'm your host, the Knackered Golfist. Um, this is I, I, I love one irons, and I found this one iron at Play It Against Sports um, this week, and I took it to the range today, and it was pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if this is like a left-handed golfer sort of orientation, but it looks to me like it's a left-handed club, but it's not. But this uh, this is a Titleist Tour model, and I stole it straight from Steve Elkington's bag from 1995. No, I didn't. But um, I actually put some lead tape on it, and uh, let's let's get some uh, let's get some light shining on that lead tape. Lead tape will solve all of your problems uh, when it comes to having weight in the head of your golf club. This is the old style way of adding weight to your uh, golf club to make it feel a bit more heavy and a bit more um, sturdy I would say in the swing and more stable and solid and and just uh, fluid um, because having having a club that's actually um, pleasantly uh, heavy to your fingertips when you're swinging a forged blade is really important and I appreciate a good heavy golf club to swing around um, in years past I've experimented with having lead tape down here behind the grip at, at what I call the butt end of the club but check out this club man this is I, I had some pictures of it on um, the Forge Golf Club Appreciation page on Facebook and I posted some pictures before the lead tape was added which was um, some you know the beautiful t the word Titleist is behind here and it's really cool so this is the tour model and there's the tour model there. But I just love one irons. And when I saw this, I sort of gasped when I saw it. I'm like, oh my god, it's a one iron. So I took it to the range. And, you know, if you have a one iron in your bag, people are going to notice. And, I mean, people don't really pay attention to what other people are doing because they're fiddling around on their phone anyway. But um, if you're actually playing with, say, somebody older than you, say maybe somebody in their... 40s or 50 or maybe even 60s or 70s you know they're going to notice that and they're going to remember that i mean i was at the range tonight actually this afternoon and i came across uh two gentlemen that were there one of them had a set of pxg irons um which i didn't really talk to him about and he actually had a um oh gosh what was it it was a japanese four iron i think it was a epoch epoch um branded uh, iron that was that he let me hit and it was pretty good uh but but he's like man if you take the way uh the pxg irons are situated in the bag they have like the seven iron will go the five iron distance of a forged blade so you're actually getting more distance out of pxg but i don't want to talk about pxg because i can't stand that stuff I want a nice, solid forged blade that I can actually cut. A, I might, I, I might actually do a video of this iron actually cutting through butter to serve on a hot biscuit. But I mean, I was hitting this pretty well, and I was pretty impressed with um, the way this club got the ball in the air. And I've actually been thinking about how the ball has changed over the years, at least back in the '80s. But I've been thinking a lot about this week, um, how the golf ball has changed and has, the, the ball doesn't spin as much as it used to, and the Bellotta ball really spun a lot, and it had to do with the, the, the rubber band windings that were in the ball and also the liquid center. And I heard a podcast where Paul Azinger was on the, uh, the Hal Sutton podcast, and he was talking about how he used to marvel at what he called the upshooter effect of how the tour players would make solid contact with the ball and the ball would act like it's actually going up like a balloon but there's no wind and I remember seeing that firsthand at the first ever I guess you could say it was the senior tour event at uh, Rancho Marietta it was called the Rayleigh Senior Gold Rush and there was a tour player his name was Bob Bentley 
and he I think he was from uh, Idaho or something, but he was playing a set of like Ping I twos or something, but he was playing the Titleist Tour Ballata, but the ball had the upshooter effect, and it was just so marvelous to watch. And back in the day, those ball strikers, the shot shaping and the and the artistry you could see in the the way those those older tour players would hit the ball was just amazing, just marvelous. And I really miss that. And um, I mean, nowadays it's just Bry uh, sorry Bryson hitting 500 yard drives. It's like who cares? There's no. It's only going a straight line. I'd much rather have a ball that has a bit of curvature on it. And I guess Justin Thomas gives a bit of homage to that sort of artistry of curvature when you hit a shot now and then because he can hit some he can hit some uh, amazing sort of hooks and draws that I've seen him hit a few times. I think he hit um god way back in March when he won the players championship. I have a feeling that it could have been when he was on 16 possibly on Saturday he hit a uh he had an amazing drive, I think, over the cart path, and then in the beginning of the second part of the fairway on 16 at TPC Sawgrass, he hit a uh, either a, a fading uh, a fade, a uh, fading slice around that or over that tree to get on the green in two there at TPC Sawgrass. But I don't know. I, I just love this. I mean, one irons are beautiful in my opinion, and I'm a, I'm a collector. I may not hit it as very well as uh, like Steve Elkington back in the day. And Steve Elkington, if you ever watch a video of a man who knows how to swing a golf club, Steve Elkington is the man. He won the 1995 PGA at Riviera, and he had such a silky smooth, simple swing that was just amazing to watch. And he's one of the, I mean, I saw him a few years ago. God, it was 2012 when I saw him at uh, Harding Park. And he still played fairway woods that had steel shafts in them. He didn't do the uh, didn't do the graphite shafts on the woods. But he was such a he was such an amazing ball striker. And he played like a draw like this. And he played with cubic balance for years. And um, and then he played with Titleist. And then he had he was I I think I saw him at the '95 Nissan Open at Riviera. And he was playing these these simple Titleist Tour models that were back in the day. And I think he won the PGA with the set of Titleist Tour models as well. So I'm a fan. Um, you don't see these Titleist Tour models much anymore. I actually have a memory of playing my first tournament with American River College on the golf team. And I was, I don't know what the heck I was playing. I could have been playing a set of Tommy Armour 845s with the dreadful Tommy Armour shafts that just was... You know, every shot you hit, you know, was was fading out to the right. It was just awful. I should have gotten the Dynamic Gold S300 shafts in them. But the kid that was play that I was playing with, he was playing for a like a private Christian school or something, and he was playing a set of these Titleist Tour models, and he made every green. I think he shot 77 in that uh, round that I played with him. But I was just amazed that he would hit the ball as well as he did. So anyway. Um, I'm going to fit in some footage of me hitting this Titleist Tour model, one iron. And I love these. I love these irons. I uh, They're a bit... Um, these are really classic. I mean, this is before Titleist started really getting into the, into the marketing aspect of, you know, getting clubs on TV and all this other stuff. This is back when... God, these probably came out... These, these are probably from... Oh, and look at the... Look at the diamonds next to the um next to the uh next to the grooves here that tells you that it's a classic iron because it has these little diamonds here kind of kind of like what the McGregor um the McGregor uh club manufacturing company did with the Nicholas irons so anyway I'm a Forge fan and I I love this stuff and so you know lead tape can can make it better for you if you're a uh if you're a person that likes a heavier golf club instead of what's available nowadays on the rack, which is ev like every day, everything's light and it's all graphite. And, you know, forged golf clubs nowadays are like 1500 bucks brand new and they still have the dynamic gold S300 shafts in them. I mean, go figure, man. That's like got to be the, 
if you're getting if you're paying that much money for a set of irons, at least don't get the dynamic gold S three hundred shafts because that's the most basic sort of vanilla vanilla flavored shaft that you could possibly get. Especially nowadays when there's more and more options, like say a Project X shaft or a Nippon kind of a shaft, um, whatever, whatever it is. There's a lot more options now than there ever used to be. So anyway, um, I'm glad I found this. It was only like 20 bucks at my local Play It Again Sports. This is a classic golf club, and I love how it says Titleist here above the one iron uh, emblem. I love how, and Tiger started playing. With, and I, Tiger, I think when he played, when he came out on tour, like uh, 1996, I think he was playing a set of Titleist tour models. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe uh, more recent alliterations of the Titleist tour model uh, clubs themselves. And they they were probably Miura forged. They were probably from Japan. You know, nobody knows, but it probably was. They were probably a special set that Mr. Miura made for Tiger. So it wouldn't surprise me. So anyway. Um, also want to give a shout out to Doug Otten from Otten's Golf Repair, who especially did the loft and lie on my new one iron. So Otten's Golf Repair is the place you need to go for refurbishing golf clubs, refinishing golf clubs, uh, restoring golf clubs, whatever you want to do. Doug Otten is the man. He's in Citrus Heights, California. Otten's Golf Repair, a special partner here with the Knackered Golfist. That's where I take all my stuff. Love ya, Doug Otten. Happy Thanksgiving, and thanks for watching The Knackered Golfist. Good Check night. out my podcast. I do a golf podcast called The Knackered Golfist Podcast. It's available on Spotify and also, what is it called? iTunes, Apple Podcasts as well. There's a couple other uh, areas that are on there too. So, And then also check out the Forge Golf Club Appreciation page. If you love Forge Golf Clubs like I do, check out that page. The members on that group page are always posting amazing pictures of their Forge Golf Clubs. The Knackered Golfers just surpassed 300 subscribers. So thank you to all my subscribers that have watched all the stuff that I do when it comes to putters, uh, drivers, woods, irons, whatever it is, random golf memories, whatever it is. Um, it's fun. It's a fun thing to do when the world's going to hell. So anyway, thanks for watching. This has been the Knackered Golfist talking about an old one iron that, that Titleist used to make, the Titleist Tour Model 1 iron. All right, folks, thanks. Oh, oh, one more thing. Check out this original grip. This is the original Golf Pride Tour Wrap that has the cord on it. This is a corded Golf Pride um, historic grip um, that, was, that was installed on higher echelon, higher quality golf clubs back in the day. So, oh, and what does it say here? It says... Golf Pride Tour Wrap, made in USA, with the cord. And this is actually a grip that Greg Norman used to use. So, um, Golf Pride is written right there. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I love old golf clubs, and they're still relevant. I only play uh, short, little municipal golf courses, like the ones here in my hometown in uh, Northern California, in uh, Sacramento area. So... That's all I can play, that's all I can afford, and that's all I have tolerance for. So anyway, thanks for watching. Good night. On the tee, the knackered golfist.